Hi, this is Craig Brown, and I am the author of Stop Hiding, Start Healing. I hope you enjoy the following message. I share from my heart and my own personal experience how to deal with and discover how to be set free from life's challenges, dealing with the pain of the past, shame, guilt, depression, anxiety, life struggles, and addiction. The following message should be a word of encouragement to you. And I hope it is. At the close of the message, I'll tell you exactly how to get a copy of my new book, Stop Hiding, Start Healing. But in the meantime, enjoy the message. So I'm going to cover uh, more about that uh, tonight. We're going to continue on our study of principle four and also um, step four. Okay. Uh, what else? Any other housekeeping issues? This platform, of course, is a, a public platform, and we do not share any sensitive in- information or details on this particular platform. Okay, but here's the deal. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you want, if you're a part of our small group, and you you are really, if you're in a place where you need some one-on-one interaction, well, you talk to your group leader. Talk to your group leader. And just ask the group leader if they have time to for a you know a text or a phone call after group or what have you. Don't don't ever um, don't don't ever not make the effort uh, for fear you're going to bother someone or, or something. This is what we do. We've been doing this for 22 years. Our goal is to help and be there as as much as we can for you. But on this platform, it's more at, you know teaching and offering a message. And the comments are great uh, that are that are here. That are on here, but at the same time, not for sensitive e- details or issues. Those can be reserved for your one-on-one time or conversations in private, okay? Because you want to be in a safe place to be able to share these things, all right? And a public platform's not that place, okay? All right, let's get into our lesson tonight, uh, working the principles and steps. Uh, actually, I put the the uh, notes or on a earlier Facebook post today, if you want to open up another tab and, and, and have that and look at that if you want to do that you can know, always go back and get that if you like uh there's a pdf but also in the post itself everything we're going on o- over tonight is is there uh, so the principle four says and we're going to read the principle and also the step four principle four says openly examine and confess my faults to myself god and to someone i trust openly examine Okay, openly examine, and that's about looking inward. Uh, The best thing we can ever do in our life is to examine ourselves. Okay, we're the most, we're it. This is it, you and I. Uh, Openly examine, right, Uh, and confess. It's talking about openly examining, taking inventory of our life, our defects, our shortcomings, our challenges, or whatever that may be, and confessing my faults to God, myself, admitting they're there, and someone I trust. The person, the someone I trust is in your small group. You can find a safe and trusting individual in one of our small groups. I will guarantee it. Um, there's not a lot of gar- there's not a lot I guarantee in life, but I, I'll t- I know a lot about this and I know a lot about our leaders and I know a lot about how we facilitate the ministry. And I can guarantee you there's a safe friend waiting for you to be an accountability partner with you, okay? That's the person we're going to open up to. Okay. It's, but it's your choice. You don't have to find, find a trusted individual that you can open up to. Okay. It's God, myself, and someone I trust. That's a really good combination. Matthew 5, 8 says, uh, which this uh, principle is based on in the Beatitudes. It says, happy are the pure in heart. Okay. It doesn't say happy are the turmoil in heart. Happy are the shame in heart. Happy are the painful in heart. It's talking about happy are the pure in heart. The whole part of uh, the whole, a lot of the effort of recovery is to have a life of purity. Okay. As best we possibly can, because this body is our body and what we put in it and what we read, what we hear, whatever, you know, we want to have uh, a pure heart as best we can. Okay. That's the goal, but that's what the principle is based on, Matthew 5, 8. Step four says we made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. We made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. 
searching. So the whole point of uh, doing the inventory is to search, to search our hearts, search our past, search our, you know, um, the path we've been on, our behaviors, our circumstances, what's causing the pain, what's causing the shame, what's causing the guilt in our life. We're doing, we're searching, searching our heart, right, in our life. And we're also doing a fearless moral inventory. And I'll talk more about a moral inventory. But it says a fearless moral inventory, okay? It says that because if you're new to recovery, right? And if, and, and if you're new to doing a searching or to searching your heart, if you're new to doing an inventory of your life, there is fear involved. I've always said that everything you've ever wanted in your life is on the other side of fear. But there is fear when it comes to having to deal with the painful issues of our past. There is fear. So let's just, let's tell it like it is. There is fear when we have to look back at our past or really search our hearts. Why? Because there's pain there. There's some other hurt there. There's some trauma there. There's something there that can be where you are afraid to deal with. And that's perfectly natural. Let yourself off the hook. Okay. Don't, don't can be, don't bring on condemnation that, oh, I can never do this because I'm, I'm just instilled with fear. Fear is natural for all of us, but it doesn't have to keep you in bondage from getting well. It does not have to keep you uh, or be a barrier to you getting better. That's why it says searching and fearless moral inventory. All right. <clears throat> When you have the Lord guiding you every step of the way of your inventory, when you let him guide you every step of the way of your of the working the steps and principles, there is no fear in the name of the Lord. When you call on the name of the Lord to help you every step of the way, there is no fear. OK, there is none. No, what do you mean, Craig? We just talked about there, that's natural. to say, Yes, there is. It is natural and the natural being for us to be afraid. But when you call on the power, okay, here's what I mean. When you say, Lord, come into my life and take over my life and be my higher power, higher power, it doesn't say higher weakness, come into my life and be my higher power. That is the spirit of God living in you, okay? So whatever you have been through in your life, whatever challenges you've ever gone through in your life, there's nothing, nothing that can dent, that can damage, that can hurt the spirit of God that lives in you. Nothing. It's the soul. It's our soul that gets rocked. It's our soul that gets uh, beaten a little bit. It's our soul that gets hurt. Okay. Understand that. So when I say fear is natural, it is in the natural. But if you call the whole point of step four leading up to step four is to say, God, take over my life and guide me through this process of which I am afraid to go. And with you, Lord, everything is possible. Psalm 6, 8, 16, verse 8 says, I set the Lord always before me because he's at my right hand. I will not be shaken. If you do anything in your inventory before you start really searching your heart, think of Psalm 16, verse 8. When you set the Lord always before you, you will not be shaken, okay? You will not be shaken. And we're here to help you with this, okay? If this is the first time you've ever searched your heart or done an inventory or work step four or principle four or what have you, you're not alone. You're not alone in this journey. And that's why our small groups are so important to be a part of. Amen? All right, Lamentations chapter three, verse 40. That's the scripture that accompanies step four. It says, let us examine our ways and test them and let us return to the Lord. Let us examine our ways and test them and let us return to the Lord. Okay. Um, maybe you're in a situation when you've been a believer for most of your life, but you've made some poor decisions and you got off track and maybe addiction took over or lifestyle took over, dysfunction took over. So. This is all this is saying is return to the Lord. OK, examine your ways. Why did you get off track? Why did I get off track? What decisions guided me off the path I was on? What triggers did I ignore? What warning signs did I ignore that took me off path? Well, I'm going to examine these ways now. I'm going to examine these ways and I'm going to return to the Lord. OK. Let's return to the Lord. How about we do it together? All right, let's not go alone. Let's go together. 
So that's exactly what this whole step four is about. Now I've got four or five points I wanna share and then we will be done. But the first one I wanna share about is this. We, this is the, this step and this principle for step four, principle four is the growth part, the growth uh, process of our recovery. This is the point where we really begin to grow. This is the point where we really experience change. We experience forgiveness. We experience healing. We experience revelation. We experience, you know, uh, you know, a true honesty, right? About our life, about our past, about our present, about working through our, our um, inventory, right? This is the growth part and it's a wonderful part, but it also can be a challenging part. It also can be a challenging step. I don't know if any of our veterans on here could say that it was a little bit challenging, but you overcame the challenge. You accepted the challenge. You see, in the old days, we would run from the challenge in recovery with the Lord going before us. We ac accept the challenge. OK, and in life, we've never, ever grown by a day at the beach, although a day at the beach is much preferred uh, for me in particular, my favorite place to be. Um, we are we grow by challenge we grow by challenge we grow by going through tough situations that's how we grow maybe not fun at the time but after the fact we're going to get better and we're going to grow this is where we are now okay the fourth step so we must be, be prepared mentally emotionally spiritually to be able to take this on mentally emotionally and spiritually See, the Lord can, can control and guide every facet of our life mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. We'll add that as well. All four, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, okay? We will grow in those areas. And you say physically, yeah, absolutely. Because if you're using substances to medicate your pain, shame, and guilt, that has to end. You just that you've got to be at a point where you're going to give that up. You're going to give it up. If you're using food, right? Food, comfort food, binging on food, right? Be, to hide your shame, your pain, your guilt, what have you. That's though that has to now be replaced. That has to go away. And you can be able to do that with the Lord's strength. You can be able to do that. So it's those four areas we got to be completely um, uh, engaged. Right. You got to be completely make an effort in every every year, every four areas of our life. Those those four areas in particular. But I'll tell you this step four is going to change your life. It'll change your life forever. I could say that with confidence because it has mine and it has for 22 years. I've seen it change thousands of lives that have been a part of Celebrate Recovery, Christ Center Recovery. Absolutely. It's a wonderful, wonderful step. Sometimes we have to go through it maybe another time. Sometimes we have to go through it maybe a third time. The inventory continues all throughout our life because it's going to change because you're going to look back and there are things that, that, that the Lord took care of and healed, but then there are other things that you experienced in your life that you can add to it. I'm not going to get into that until uh, next week. But remember this, okay? And an inventory is a lot about inventorying our life, but also our past. Hear me when I tell you this. When you put your past on paper, okay, when you journal or do the work, answer the questions, work it, when you put your past on paper, it equals freedom and healing, okay? It does. It works tremendously when you're able to inventory it. You're going to be writing. This is a writing exercise, and we'll give you, a, there's a handout we'll give you, we'll have for next time, okay? But it's a very, very important as you're writing your, as you're putting down your past, your issues, the challenges, the victories, the positive things, it is amazingly healing and it will set you free. Okay. Now, the second point, we begin, as I mentioned earlier, what is described in step four as a moral inventory. It is this step and principle that we really, truly begin to grow, grow our self-awareness. Okay. See, a lot of us haven't bothered at all with, with looking inward. We've never bothered at all with searching. We've never bothered at all with doing an inventory of our life. We've really not put much effort into fully understanding why am I so angry? Why am I so depressed? Why am I full of anxiety? Why do I have so much shame? Why do I have so much guilt? 
Why is this pain in my life? Why is that here? How do we find out? We inventory, right? We inventory it. Where is it coming from? The whole point of recovery is not just to get clean and sober, you know? It's to deal with the pain and the guilt. Matter of fact, two out of three people come to Christ Center Recovery because of pain and not just addiction, okay? It's not, this is, this is not just addiction. This is life. This is life, okay? But this moral inventory, and I'll share more about uh, how, what it is. Essentially, it's about, uh, for the first time in our life, doing an on, honest, honest inventory of our past. Honest inventory. See, so often, um, we don't want to go there because we know it's too painful. We don't want to go there because it brings up too many bad memories. I, I totally understand and empathize. I used to be there. I used to be there until I finally got to the place where I could approach it in it honestly. I wasn't blaming anybody. I was taking responsibility and I was on it, be doing an honest assessment of me. Okay. And I'm quite a, I'm a piece of work, man. And I had a, I'm still working on my stuff, but it was an honest inventory of my life. And it, this is what we do. And this is what I've witnessed thousands of people do over the last 22 years. And it's a wonderful, wonderful exercise. And I'll share more about that, okay? We're coming clean. We are no longer allowing denial to be a stronghold. You see, it's denial that kept us in, uh, and also shame, but denial kept us from really um, uh, doing an honest, honest inventory of our life at any time of our life, right? Yep, denial. Because we, see, when we're in the midst of our struggle, that's, we take on that identity. And it becomes our comfort zone. It's so it's so strange that we do that, but it's typically it's per, it's natural for us to identify with the pain and stay there because we develop a false reality, and then we're in denial. I'm okay, but I'm really not. Right? My life is all right, but it really isn't. You know what I mean? It's just a, such a battle going on. But this is where we come clean, and the fourth step is where we want to be stripped of completely the denial that has kept us in bondage and the shame that has kept us in bondage, okay? And we're doing exactly what the step says. We openly examine and confess my faults to myself, God, and someone I trust. That's exactly what we're doing when we're doing a moral inventory, okay? Next point. God, our higher power, with the help of the Holy Spirit, helps to open our eyes to the decay, weaknesses, character defects, and our shortcomings. There's, it, it's, it's not always easy for us to see what our defects are, our shortcomings. It's really the, the, the uh, love, the grace, the mercy, and the, and the strength of the Lord that allows us to see the areas, the blind spots in our life that we have kept suppressed or a lot of them that we didn't even know we had. See, recovery is awesome, so awesome, but it's, a Christ, and it's in a Christ-centered structure because it's the Holy Spirit that is working our heart. So many people come into recovery uh, with a primary issue. There's usually a primary issue that they come in with. And then they begin to work. They get into small group. They're doing the steps. They're doing the principles. They're doing the step study. They're really doing the work. Okay. And along the way, the Lord is just revealing some things that, um, and exposing some areas in our life that we didn't know were really there, that we had suppressed and tried to forget about. And that's really the inventory process. You see, we're not the only ones doing the inventory. The Lord's doing it with us because we asked him to. And he's far more equipped to be able to reveal things than we are. He knows us better than we do. So it's such a good, good combination when we work with the Lord. And then someone we trust, right? Someone you trust and develop a friendship with would be able to help you. They may be able to uh, uh, observe and see some uh, habits or things that uh, maybe you're not even aware of, right? Because of our blind spots. It's just a really good, healthy, when it's in a Christ-centered structure. I just can't say enough about that, okay? But he alone will take every one of the weaknesses that we discover in our life and in our inventory, and he'll turn them into a strength, yeah? He'll take all the weaknesses, the defects and the shortcomings, and he'll, he'll pivot. He'll take them and rework them to become a strength. He will, down the road a ways. Now, next point. 
similar to every business taking stock of inventory and every business most you know think of amazon think of their inventory process have you ever been to the grocery store and the guys and the guy or the, or the woman is going down and they're you know scanning the the inventory or what have you that's exactly what this is in step four and principle four um they begin there you have to if you're running a successful business you have to take inventory if you're going to be a healthy um, and live a healthy lifestyle you have to take inventory same thing you have to know what's on the aisles you've got to know what's in storage you've got to know you know how much that is you got to know how much you have left you got to know where it is where did it come from you have to take inventory right so that's what we're doing we're taking our clipboard and we're just walking down the aisles of our life oh boy you know check off check off check off we're walking down the aisles of our life right and it's a good process and exercise we're taking uh we're taking inventory of our defects our shortcomings uh we're taking stock of our past uh, you know the pain bitterness resentments jealousy we're looking at these things but you know what we're also doing we're also taking inventory of all the positive things in our life too the most important thing we can do when we're doing step four principle four is to make sure it's balanced it's not always heavy defects and shortcomings it's also balanced with hey victories good you know uh, uh good attitudes approaches good healthy relationships good things i've done ways i have served and other it has to be really balanced you know a lot of people get stuck and a lot of people quit at this stage because they're not keeping it balanced. You've got to maintain balance when you're working the step, uh, step four and principle four. You just have to do that, okay? At the same time, again, the inventory is, uh, has such a positive effect on our life. And you're not meant to do it alone. We have to do it with someone else. We have to have either a sponsor in our life, accountability partners, and that's where you find them in our small groups. Um, if you've never been in recovery before and you've heard, you know, the term sponsor or what have you, it's really, it means a mentor, someone that has been down that road a long ways ahead of you that is now equipped to be able to help you follow each and every step in principle and work your recovery. That's essentially what that person will do. And you should find that person and can find that person in your small groups. And if you would like to say, hey, I was listening to the lesson tonight and then, you know, Craig mentioned the role of a sponsor and we'll talk more about that in the coming weeks. But uh, it's never too late or never too early to find that person, a mentor for you who can be there for you. And all you have to do is ask and all you have to do is ask your group facilitator and say, hey, I, I'm really I would like to find someone. If you um, already send, send us a direct message here on the Facebook page. And just say, I'm looking for a sponsor and, you know, give us your name, email, and phone. And we'll, we'll, we'll help you the best we can, okay? We don't assign them, uh, but we can, you know, take your information and give it to our group leaders. And they can then, you know, determine who may be available in the group. And, you know, we'll, we'll help you. We'll help you work that out, okay? And then last point is we ask God for the courage. And this is what it takes. We ask God for the courage to take this on and to guide us through every step of this inventory, right? We ask God for the courage. It does take courage. It takes courage to step out. It takes courage to step into a recovery environment because, you know, if you were like me, you allowed shame to keep you in bondage. You allowed shame to keep you in a place of secret. You're, you're suffering in silence. You were dealing with a secret, you know, uh, addiction. You just wanted to hide instead of heal, right? And shame is what does that because we don't want anybody to know that we're suffering because they think we have it all going on. We don't want to ever talk about embarrassing items or things like that just with anybody in public, you know, understood. Uh, but shame is from the pit of hell. Shame is, is manufactured and sent from the pit of hell to keep good people like you in bondage and to keep them from getting the help they need by hiding. But the opposite of that is the power of the Holy Spirit I talked about earlier. When you have the Spirit of the Lord, you not only take on the power and the strength, but you take on a courage, a courage that you've never had before to that degree. 
So when you're working this step, you're working this principle, you are calling on a higher power that is of a higher power that is powerful than anything in this universe to help you. And you say, well, you mean God would just help little old me? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Because he's perfectly equipped to do it. He's had tougher, tougher situations under his belt. But if you ask him, he, he says, absolutely. Call on me and I will be there for you. Call on the power and, and I will be there for you. Call on the courage. Lord, I need courage to work through this principle and work through this step. And he will offer that uh, for you. So will your network of support. Your support team, your small group will be praying for you. You have people that are there to encourage you. You have fellowship. Maybe you've been isolated this past year due to COVID. You'll have new friendships, safe friendships, trusted friendships, right? And a lot of us that came out of tough situations, we didn't want to deal with anybody. And that's that's understandable, right? Because we were surrounded by people that wanted to fix us. They knew us better than we did. And we got weary and tired. Maybe they wanted to control us. No, that's not what christ Center recovery is all about. That's nothing that we experience in the ministry at, Celebr at Church of the Redeemer Celebrate Recovery. Okay? We're there to love you unconditionally. We're there to support you every step of the way. We're there to pray for you. We're there to be a resource for you. And if we, we have our limitations, if we don't, we know who can. And we can guide you to professional counselors and therapists and other organizations around the area that can be of help. That's what recovery is all about. It's a network. You need a network of good resources. You need a network of good people, safe people. And I can attest to that, that our leaders and those that are involved in our small groups are just that, safe, trusted, caring, loving, and experienced through this recovery process. As I mentioned earlier, as we'll close here, God knows your heart better than better than you do. He knows my heart better than I do. He knows our weaknesses better than we do. He knows our strengths better than we do. He already sees so much far ahead. He knew tonight that we would all be together. He just did. He knew tonight as you were drawn to this for whatever reason, when you didn't feel like it, I totally get it. You know, generally when I don't feel like doing something and I go, I knew it's exactly when I need to go. But you were brought here, we're brought here together, and that's all by his design. Maybe the fourth step was something you really needed to hear, you know, maybe. Uh, I don't I don't work as, uh, you know, as scheduled. He has that perfectly under control. But we're together now for this purpose, and the, and the whole purpose of our being together is to grow and to get better. That when we log off after we're done here, that we'll be that we've learned something new, that you know we've allowed the Lord to do something new in our heart. We've allowed the Lord to do something to change us, to grow us, to heal us. And that's what the goal is in, in christ Center recovery. It truly is. So I hope, I hope this is helpful for you. It's a lot, you know, step four, we're gonna continue to move through this. A few other lessons that we have uh, um, to cover. Uh, matter of fact, we're, I'm gonna show you, we're gonna have a handout and I'm going to show you exactly what that inventory looks like when it comes to the format uh, that we use. There are different columns for different things we can write in. And we'll make sure we share that for you. Because what is involved in our inventory are other people. Okay. If I were to ask you in your inventory uh, as we start, because what we, we're not only in, inward, inwardly looking and searching, which we are in our own heart, right? But we're also going back over our past and our uh, path we came from. And oftentimes there were people involved in your history and people that may have done harm to you, may have hurt you, uh, people that even as now, as I'm bringing this up, you're thinking of, and it just triggered you in a way that, you know, that's, that's a memory I don't want to remember. Well, we ha I encourage you to not suppress it, but work through it. But we're going to put a column of, you know, different people, how many ever there are. And then you're going to work through what that affect, how did that affect you, that relationship, whatever that is. And that is so freeing to be able to do that. That's part of putting our past on paper. And it involves, you know, itemizing and going through different, you know, per, uh, people, places, things, things like that, that are, that may, uh, may have been uh, hurtful. And it's just important for us to do that. 
but um, I'll share more about that as we uh, as we work uh, through this over the coming weeks. Okay. So anyway, uh, that's about it. I'm glad to see everybody's online tonight. Got a good good group on here tonight. Hope all of you have enjoyed uh, our time together. And um, if you have any comments, again, you want to join the group tonight, meets at 8 o'clock here in the next uh, 20 minutes or so. Send a direct message here to the Facebook page, name, email, and phone number. And I will we'll get that out to the leader, whether you for the either, you know, if you want to join the men's group, men or the women, women you want to join the women's group, um, and let us know. And we will get that to the leader, and they'll reach out to you and send you a link for the Zoom group. It meets with on Zoom. And that leader will email you, text you, send you that link. And if you tried to do that this past week and you haven't connected with a leader, uh, the next 20 minutes are key. You'll, we'll make sure you get that. So leaders, keep an eye out for a message uh, on your app. Make sure um, you are ready to receive a newcomer if one of our newcomers and our guests wants to join a group. Okay, well, let's pray. We'll close. Just ask the Lord to bless everything that we've gone over tonight. Lord. We're so grateful for all the work you do in our life, Lord Jesus, and especially when we reach this uh, juncture in our recovery, uh, working step four, principle four. You know how important it is, Lord, for the growth step. You know how important it is, Lord, for us to look inward, for us to do a searching moral inventory of our life. It's such a good exercise, Lord God. And actually, you wrote, you created your Bible, your word to be able to do that. And that's what we use. You know, every scripture, every principle is is to be applied to our life. So we're grateful for that, Lord, for what you do in our life. We pray healing over every single person that's uh, that's joining us tonight. We pray an abundance of blessings over their life, Lord God, where the hurt is, where the pain is, where the shame is. Lord, touch them, remove that, Lord. Help them start to remove that, Lord, as they work their recovery and begin to heal. So Father, we love you. We uh, really appreciate all you do in our life. Thank you for this opportunity to grow, to change, uh, to get well, to go from a place of brokenness to wholeness. You're the only one that can help us. In Jesus' name, amen. I really hope that my message was an encouragement to you, okay? I really, truly do. Now, to get a copy of my book, Stop Hiding, Start Healing, one of two ways. You can go to my website, stophidingstarthealingbook.com. Stop Hiding, Start Healing Book. Dot com. Or you can go directly to Amazon and in the search bar, put in Craig Brown, stop hiding, start healing. Okay. If you want to reach out to me, you can send me a direct message on our Facebook page. Stop hiding, start healing on Facebook. Stop hiding, start healing. I hope, I hope we'll all be able to do that very soon. Stop hiding, start healing. Enjoy my book. Thank you for tuning in. Talk to you next time.